Now, let's turn to Ukraine, and tomorrow it is four weeks since the start of the Russian invasion. And in the last 24 hours or so, there have been reports of Ukrainian forces successfully fighting back in a town west of the capital and also in areas in the south. Ukrainian forces are reported to have retaken the town of Makariv, west of Kyiv, and they're also attacking Russian forces in the south of the country. The southern town of Vozny Senex has already repelled an attack by the Russian army. But in the port of Mariupol, Ukraine's president says around 100,000 civilians are still trapped without food, water or heat. Officials say Russian bombing raids have turned the city into, quote, ashes. Well, let's head to Kyiv, first of all, and talk to our chief international correspondent, Lise Doucet. And, and Lise, where you are, of course, we've seen the lifting of that latest curfew. Just take me through some of the conversations, what has been happening there in the capital through the course of today. Yes, another 35-hour uh, curfew ended here at 5 GMT, 7 o'clock local time. But then it gave way to what's being described as one of the noisiest moments. I think you can still hear the boom of artillery. The morning was marked by sustained artillery fire, louder, closer, Russian artillery fire. Also, the constant sound of small arms fire sustained for about half an hour. And in days since Russia invaded Ukraine, we used to occasionally hear the rattle of gunfire at different points of the city, but this was the longest we had ever heard. And now in the last half hour, constant thuds and booms as both the sound of outgoing surface-to-air missiles being fired by the Ukrainians, but more artillery fire. And we've been, we heard from the mayor of the city, Vitaly Klitschko, uh, earlier today, who talked about fighting north and west of the city. We'll hear more from him in a moment. But he also confirmed that they have taken back Makariv. And we've heard in the last hour that parts of Irpin to the northwest have also been taken back after days of fierce fighting. Let's look at all the latest developments, not just here, but across the country with our Ukraine correspondent, James Waterhouse. This war was always Russia's invasion, but it's also become a story of Ukraine's resistance and today, fight back. Makariv to the west of Kiev's reportedly been retaken. The regional chief of police there posted this patriotic video, complete with dramatic music. The Ukrainian flag flies once more, he says. Similar has been happening in southern cities too. Russia isn't stopping, though. It continues to bombard Mykolaiv, where Tamara is in labor. It's scary, but not as much as on February 24th, when the Russians began to shell Mykolaiv from all sides. Over time, every day, you get used to it more and more. Especially when the explosions are somewhere far away, it seems that they're in another state. And then yesterday, here, near the hospital, just 500 meters opposite the maternity hospital, it became scary again. Doctors say there's been a new wave of births here, caused by women going into labour through stress. In the southeast, President Zelensky reckons there'll soon be nothing left of Mariupol, where 100,000 people are still trapped. However, one of the bosses at the city's port has told the BBC it's still intact, reflecting how strategically significant the Russians see it. In a Kiev hospital, Ola recovers after a shell landed close to her home. She shielded her one-month-old daughter with her body, meaning Victoria wasn't hurt. I woke up with her screaming and it was accompanied by the sound of glass crashing, alarm, fire, cracking. It's like a catastrophe. I just heard her shouting. Here in the capital, people are making the most of a curfew ending, as well as this warm spring sunshine to claw back some lost normality in their lives. The sound of artillery, and light gunfire can occasionally be heard echoing through neighboring streets as both sides start to dig in. Ukraine's government has announced nine new temporary ceasefires to try and help people escape the fighting. More sanctions, economic punishments are expected to be announced by US President Biden today. So far, they haven't slowed the fighting at all. James Waterhouse, BBC News in Kyiv.
Well, today in this warm spring weather and the fact that at least the heart of this uh, capital still remains uh, safe, the mayor of this city, Vitaly Klitschko, along with his brother Vladimir, both former champion boxers, held a press conference at a very symbolic location right next to a statue of St. Michael, the patron saint of this city, the protector of this city. And he told us about how that the Russians have been trying to advance and encircle this city for the past three weeks, but that their efforts at approaches have been halted by Ukraine's resistance. The, the Russians are getting closer to the heart no. of the city? No, no, no. The Russians try to be closer. The Russians uh, try to make a circle around Kiev, but uh, our soldiers destroy the plans of Russians. But we hear the sounds that the explosions are coming closer into the heart, and not in the outskirts now. Yeah. They're close to the center. Uh, closer. Russians, Russians uh, bombing and uh, make a rackets uh, attack uh, to the Kiev. Also, the center of Kiev also uh, was not so far from center of Kiev. Also destroyed uh, the buildings and. Uh, and uh, the uh, subway station was destroyed. It's, uh, it's, uh, they try to come, but uh, I promise you, as mayor of Kiev, as citizens, they never come to Kiev. Can I just ask you the Russian, the Russian charge that they hit the shopping center because there were military vehicles there? It was used as a, as a weapon storage? Propaganda in Russia works so well. They explain every attack because they were uh, fighting against uh, Russians. You, as a journalist, was in any place, I see you. Did, did you see in the TV apartments building some military places? In the school and, and preschools, military pricing, uh, places? In shopping small, also military places? They was the Ukrainian sol soldier and that's why we destroyed them. It's a uh, Russian propaganda war work so much and they zombed the people and uh, explain liar. They liars and that's why don't believe Russians. The mayor of this city, Vitaly Klitschko, underlining that there is, as always in every war, a battle for the narrative and a battle unfolding on the ground. And this, of course, is a country where the president, Vladimir Zelensky, now addresses not just the people of this country, but people watching around the world. Uh, addresses them to tell them what the latest is and every night he tries to rally the spirits of both soldiers and civilians who are standing up to the Russian advance just about to hit its one month mark but every night he also tells uh, the rest of the world as he did again today that while Ukraine is grateful for the support it's received it's running out of weapons as he told the Ukraine the Italian parliament yesterday that Ukraine was on the verge of survival. In other words, that it was getting close. Yes, they were holding back the Russian advance, but the longer this goes on, the more weapons uh, that Ukraine will need. And of course, uh, he wanted that message to ring loud and clear before the meetings in Brussels tomorrow, where we're expecting to hear from President Joe Biden and other leaders talk of more sanctions, more powerful sanctions, more powerful weapons. But Ukraine wants most of all, to use their phrase, to close the sky, a no-fly zone which has been repeatedly rejected. But President Zelensky is certain to keep asking. Lisa said uh, live there in Kyiv. Thanks very much.